We are finally getting some snow. It's been about uh, almost two weeks without any snow at all. I've got my helper here helping shovel off the porch. And uh, you're not gonna have to watch us do this all in regular time. I'm gonna uh, time lapse this thing here. But I wanted to tell you guys real quick, I've got some videos that I took this summer of Emma. Uh, they're super cute. I hope you like them. I'm gonna put them out midweek. I'm gonna try. And uh, they're gonna be little how-to videos with Emma. So hopefully it'll be a little series that you guys will enjoy. Just a midweek little video that we shot during the summer. And uh, also I want to remember, I keep forgetting to tell you guys, my wife Bonnie is a great writer. Uh, she has a lot of stories about our life out here on her blog site. It's simplelifeinthewild.com. I'll put a link. Well, actually, the link is already down below. It's in every one of our videos. And I'll also put a link right up here. Um, simplelifeinthewild.com. She's had it for a long time. She doesn't have any new uh, stories on there as of recent, but a lot of stories on there. If you guys like good reading, go check that out. All right, I'm gonna get a shovel in this thing. that's done I have to scoop the snow from below the deck out over the edge now much it a lot of people ask us why we clean out in front of the deck and it's pretty simple really it's so that it's easier on our bodies and let me explain we like to keep the deck shoveled off all winter and on average we get a lot of snow out here so so we don't have to shovel the snow up over the railing if we can just keep scooping it underneath the railing, there's no lifting, there's just pushing. A little bit of back twisting, shove it over the railing. And then you could see with me with the scoop, I wasn't tweaking my back or twisting really hard. I was using my legs a lot and my shoulders, my upper body. Just push it over the edge. We've got an endless edge here. We can put infinite amounts of snow. So keeping that cleaned out allows us to keep the deck shoveled off by just pushing it without lifting and twisting. Also, it gives us some exercise. So that's it in a nutshell. What have we got going here? Um, kombucha. So um, you can see this is the SCOBY down here. And we're at about day eight on it. And this tells the temperature. The kitchen's a little chillier, so we're right about 70. You don't want it to get any colder than that. And then um, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm still kind of learning and watching videos about it and just kind of doing it on the fly. Um, but 
So I'm starting to get a little bit of bubbles. I think I'm gonna leave it for a couple more days um, so that it gets even a little bit more fermented and then we'll um, bottle it and start a second stage ferment with some fruit juice and go from there. You got some nice bottles for it? I do. Um, I got these off of Amazon and so we're gonna try these. I'm gonna do it with some peach juice, I think, for my first batch. Nice. Yeah. All right. About once a week, I have to empty the compost bucket. This time around, I actually have some old eggnog. Bonnie likes eggnog. I do not. She got Emma to like it too, so Emma was drinking some eggnog with her. And uh, yeah, we don't really have any other place to put it, so we're just gonna put it in the compost bin. So I've got my trusty spatula because this time of year, I don't have running water in that water spigot right there. And it's just too much of a hassle to bring water out to here in a bucket or a pitcher. So I just cleaned the compost bucket out with a spatula and a little bit of snow. Here we go. Let me see if I can set this up here. This year, I am experimenting with some plywood on the sides and the back of our compost bin because it's just some uh, wire fencing and wood slats so you know air can get into it but every year a lot of the snow drifts into it fills up with snow and then I've got no place to put the compost without shoveling the snow out first it just adds an extra step to this chore that is a pain in the butt So far this year, we've had a fair amount of wind and I have had very little to no snow inside of there. So I'm very excited about that. You wanna take a look inside this bucket? Yep, what you think a compost bucket would look like. Let's get a little bit of snow in there, swirl it around. Scrape the sides with my spatula. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can do kind of a final wash inside. And we just keep it from getting too gross, you know? But all that's gonna happen is I'm gonna stick it back under the sink. And we're gonna start filling it up with coffee grounds, eggshells, banana peels, and all that sort of stuff. All right, good to go. Oh yeah. Got to empty the eggnog. Might make some uh, little mice or shrews out here happy. That's it for that chore. I'm getting a fire going in the shop today. I'm going to start working on the otter sleds that I was telling you about, that one that I cracked from hitting too hard. So, and I'm gonna do some touch up on our other two otter sleds as well. One of the otter sleds is brand new. Uh, it has no tie downs. And so I'm gonna install some tie downs on that so that we can cover our loads with a tarp and then use bungees to keep that secure. That's what the tie downs are for. And the other one, our oldest otter sled, some of the tie downs have broke or ripped through. So I'm gonna replace those. So once the shop warms up, I'll get to that. All right. Got them all lined up, awaiting their turn in the shop. This is our oldest one. See that nice wood patch on there? There's all kinds of patches on that one. That's the uh, the middle aged one, if you will. A few cracks, nothing major, uh, except where I broke it. Yeah, you gotta like that. But. Uh, 
I know I'll be able to fix it. Now move back to the brand new one. The only reason we picked this one up is because we haul a lot of supplies and these are the sleds that we use to get our firewood. And if we were down a sled, um, it could mean, well, it would just be a pain in the butt. You notice I say that a lot. If something were to happen, it'd be a pain in the butt. Anyways, so we went to the store one time last year. We purchased a new one just to have. So it's kind of like it's in waiting. We haven't used it yet. We don't need it yet. Uh, but once one of these goes beyond repair, we can throw it away and then instantly have one ready to go. So I'm gonna get this inside and uh, start warming it up. We'll just do one at a time. You can see I don't have a ton of room in here. We still have a snowmobile in here and quite a few other things. But I only need to work, I can only work on one at a time, so that's all I'm gonna do. Got the fire going in here. It's about 15 degrees outside. About 30 degrees in here, so it's still a little bit chilly. But the fire is blazing right now and uh, it should warm up quite fast. I'm just gonna replace a couple of the tie downs on this one. All right, I've done a couple so far, kind of gotten it down. Seems like it's so long in between when I do this, I have to relearn how to do it. So I've got some rope here. And after I cut the old tie down out of this hole right here, I've just taken a little drill bit and I'm just reaming it out a little bit. Uh, the rope that I've got is a touch bigger diameter than my last stuff. So I had to ream the hole out just a little. Kind of helps if I take these pliers and squish uh, that tip of the rope. Helps me to get it through that opening a little better. Then I'm also using this punch to press it in. And once I get it on this side, I'll show you real quick. It's right there. I just take a pair of pliers, grab onto it, and pull not too far. I want to leave enough on this back end. All right, you can see that. I've got that punch pulled tight in there. And measure that. Yeah, it's about right. Cut that there. Tie a nice knot in it. And it ends up just like that. You can see the knot on the underneath side there. That will not come undone. That will not come through this hole. And this rope is pretty stiff in this hole. I've never had a problem from these coming out. <clears throat> they usually stay right in place. Just right there gives us a good place to hook a bungee to. We're good to go. All right, so I finished that other otter sled. I've got the broken one in here. I cut a couple pieces of plywood out and you can see the break it goes from that corner and it kind of stops right in here. So it goes up into there, but it stops. Um, what I will do is I have this piece of plywood. I'll, I'll stop it right before that hole there, that molded hole and it will go on this side. Now, on the other side, I've got a similar piece of plywood, and you can see the crack through there pretty easily as the sunlight shines through. Now, I will set this piece of plywood down there, mold it right around that, and I will screw those two pieces of plywood together uh, pretty simply as I get this crack nice and tight. That will essentially fix that crack. Then I will come up on this corner right here and I'll have to figure something out for that corner. Making it up as I go along, but that's how far I've gotten. I'll show you when I get these two pieces of plywood screwed together, sandwiching 
uh, and fixing this crack. All right, I got those two pieces of plywood installed. The screws that I had were literally just uh, like a 16th to an eighth of an inch too long, so they were sticking through. I don't want any of those sharp points. So I took the angle grinder here and just grind off those tips. That part is pretty much done. You can see the crack comes up through here and then just ends right there. I think it's come together pretty good. It'll be a good fix. This will last quite a few years. All right, guys, I've reached a stopping point for today. I didn't get all done what I wanted to get done. Um, I did fix the big crack. You can see, let me bring you in close for a final. You can see how that one came together right there. Get out of the shadow there. Not too shabby. A um, couple screws. Yeah, piece of wood back in there. So I did notice a couple cracks on the corners here. There's one right here, a pretty good size one. And then one down on the front corner. And by all accounts, you guys are probably thinking these sleds are crap. Let me just say we've had these sleds for a long time and we kind of abused them. We put them through the ringer. We try to take really good care of our stuff, obviously, but these things go through the ringer without a doubt. So the fact that there's just a little crack here, a little crack there, uh, for as much as we use them and as long as we've had them speaks volumes to uh, their quality, actually. Not a paid uh, video sponsor at all. Um, we just like using these sleds. So, uh, like I said, calling it quits for today. Um, sun's gone down. I've got a few more things to do inside. I want to go hang out with the family a little and, uh, I'll just leave this otter sled in here. Um, that way I can come start a fire and get right to work on it. So yeah, uh, for the most part, it is, uh, back in commission and we'll, uh, I'm gonna call it good. If I need to use it at the spur of a moment, um, I can put a hitch on and, and take off and use it. Those other cracks, I didn't even know they were there. So, uh, but while I have it in the shop, I'm gonna fix it up. So I'm gonna call it quits and uh, go see the family. The Monte Brothers. <laughs>